In this video, we're going to learn how to construct Bohr-Rutherford diagrams. So by the end of this video, you will be able to construct a Bohr-Rutherford diagram for an atom from the atomic number and the mass number, which we get from our periodic table. So what we're going to do as we go through this video is we're going to build up a Bohr-Rutherford diagram using the example of sodium. And so if you recall, Sodium has an atomic number of 11 and an atomic mass of 22.99. Now, just to remind ourselves, the mass number is the atomic mass that's rounded off to the nearest whole number. So that would be 23 in this case. And then we also need the number of protons, which is our atomic number of 11. Our electrons for a neutral atom is 11 which is also our atomic number. And then finally, the number of neutrons is our mass number of 23 minus 11, our atomic number, which gives us 12 neutrons. We need all of this information to build up our Bohr-Rutherford diagram. So let's now walk through the steps of building up a diagram. And you're always going to follow these same steps as you build them up. First, we begin by drawing a circle, like the blue circle I have on the screen here. And that circle is going to represent the nucleus. Now, if you recall, in the nucleus, we have both protons and neutrons. So we need to show in the nucleus how many protons and how many neutrons we have in our example, our sodium atom. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to write first our protons, a lowercase p, which stands for a proton. And then we give it a superscript of a plus, which just denotes that every proton has a positive charge. It really emphasizes the charge. And that is equal to, in this case, 11, because we have 11 protons in our sodium atom. For the number of neutrons, we do a lowercase n. And then its superscript, we're going to give it a zero. And this emphasizes that a neutron has no charge or zero charge. And that is equal to, as we calculated before, 12. So both of those go in the nucleus of our atom. From there, step three, we need to start placing electrons in shells around the nucleus. And there are some specific rules in terms of where electrons go in these shells. In the first shell, or we say the first level, or we can also call it n equals 1, because it's the first energy level, that holds only up to two electrons maximum. Then electrons go into our second level once the first level is full and only once the full first level is full. And so this second level, also known as n equals 2, can hold up to 8 electrons maximum. Now once we filled the first level with 2 and the next level with 8, then we can then start filling our third level which is also known as n equals 3, and that can hold up to 8 electrons maximum as well. In this course, we're only going to go up through three energy levels. You'll learn a bit more about the atom and its atomic structure in different chemistry courses, and you'll, you'll get to understand why we only go up to three here, but that is for another video another time. So let's go back to our example then, and we need to start placing electrons here. Now, remember, in our first level, and, and looking at our sodium, we need to place 11 electrons in our diagram. And so in our first level, we can fit only two. So I'm just going to draw one dot to represent one, and another dot to represent another. Now, I'm drawing them paired here, but as long as you have two electrons in that first ring, that first shell, then that's what I would be looking for. Okay, we've placed two. We still have nine to place, so we can start filling up our second shell. And I'm going to put one, two, three, four. 
And now I'm going to start doubling them up. And I'm going to go 5, 6, 7, 8. And at this point, if I count up the number of dots, I've got 10 electrons on here. And my second energy level is filled. So from here, I still need to place one electron. So I'm just going to put that in our third shell. Now a couple of uh, kind of worthwhile terminology pieces to mention is the shell that has electrons that's the furthest away from the nucleus is called our valence shell. And that will become very important as we start to talk about ions and how ions form. All of the shells on the inside, so the second one here in this case and the first one, those are non-valence shells, or sometimes they're called inner shells. And those are all the electrons that are on the inside sort of part of our atom. Okay, so those are just a couple of worthwhile terminology pieces to note. Um, I guess also to note is again, I drew the electron pair in pairs in the second shell as well. As long as there's eight in the second shell, that's all that matters for this course. Okay, so that was the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for sodium. Let's just go through a couple of examples quickly. So for hydrogen, hydrogen has an atomic number of one. So it would have one proton, one electron, and its atomic mass is 1.008, which means its mass number is one, and one minus one is gonna give us zero neutrons. So step one, I'm gonna draw a circle with my nucleus. I'm gonna write my protons, which is one, and my neutrons, which is zero. And then I'm gonna draw my first shell. Okay, and then I have one electron to place. So all I need to do is draw one dot there, and that's it. We're done with the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for hydrogen. One more example then is sulfur. So sulfur has an atomic number of 16 and an atomic mass of 32.06. So the number of protons is our atomic number, which is 16. We have a neutral atom of sulfur, so that's 16 electrons as well. And then our neutrons is 32, because that's our mass number. It's our atomic mass rounded off to the nearest whole number minus 16, which gives us 16 neutrons as well. So step one, we draw our nucleus, and then we write step two, our number of protons, which is 16, and our number of neutrons, which is also 16. Now keep in mind, we need to place 16 electrons here. So let's draw one shell, and at most, this one can take two. Okay, so we've placed two, we still need to place 14 more. So we're gonna draw a second shell. And then we're gonna place one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna double them up, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, at this point we've placed 10 and we need to place six more because we need 16 dots total on our diagram. So I'm gonna draw a third shell can't draw circles very well, but that's okay. And we need to place six more. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and then five and six. Okay, and that's 16 electrons placed. You should always double check your diagram and count and make sure the number of dots matches your number of electrons, which it does in this case. So that is the correct Bohr-Rutherford diagram for sulfur. That's it then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.